The rent strike of Sunset Park, Brooklyn continues, and so do the struggles of its organizers and supporters. On Monday, August 20th, the Red Hook Community Court was packed with supporters of Dennis Flores. Flores, an organizer with Occupy Sunset Park, was arrested on July 19th after defending 59-year-old disabled strike organizer Francisca Ixtilico from a physical attack by building superintendent Israel Espinoza. We spoke with Flores the morning of his arraignment. The morning of the people's inspection, you know, we had just finished doing a sleep in and we all slept on the sidewalks. We had, because, you know, the folks at the, the, the buildings, they lose their electricity, there's no AC, there's no fans, there's no way to keep cool in the summer. So we, we, we decided to all spend the night in solidarity with the tenants and sleep outdoors. So the morning, the morning of, and we woke up, these uh, contractors, who were sent over by the landlord, by the slumlord, they, uh, they came to work on the electricity. And we wanted to inspect. You know, this is the first time these people ever showed up. And the tenant said, you know, we want to see what they're doing. So I followed two tenants, two ladies, into the basement. And as soon as they got into the doorway, the super was there, Israel Espinosa, who's standing across the street right now. He, um, he blocked them from going in. And his way of blocking in is, like elbow checking a 65 year old woman and then like pushing up or pinning her up against the corner and he took a cheap shot at her and punched her you know directly in front of me in front of other tenants and i jumped in the middle and as soon as he went to take a second swing i grabbed him by his neck and i pulled him off of her and i threw him to the side you know and the tenants went into the right into the basement and i followed them and you know started photographing and filming the conditions in the basement and so this is why he wanted to block us from seeing you know, the, the Department of Building Inspectors, HPD Inspectors, they've been coming to this building for months trying to get into the basement, trying to, like, document the conditions of this, like, this garbage from the, from the floor to the ceiling. The electricity is all kind of illegal wiring going on, faulty electricity. So all these things, you know, the inspectors been needing to see, and there hasn't been no real enforcement on the part of, on the city's part to actually go in there, you know, force their way into the basement, and, and, and document those conditions. So since the city can't do anything and no one can do anything, we felt like we as a people have the right, and especially the tenants who live there have a right to be in that building and see what's going on and bring the media in there. So that's that was the point of what this whole purpose was about, getting the world to see what, what, what they're living in, the conditions that they're living in and documenting that so then there could be some action. So. You know, so the city, the city has been sending inspectors, but they haven't been able to gain access to the basement. Exactly, it's like a big joke. You know, where we would be out there protesting, uh, we would hang a banner off the building, and the police would come, a big emergency service trucks, and they would come and tell us that that was illegal, that that was a fire hazard because we hung the banners off the fire escape. But the police couldn't go into the basement and like re have any real enforcement to force the super to open the doors to let the city inspectors in. So it's like a big joke. They, here they come, and the police were clearly there to protect the, 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 the property and the interests of the slumlord and enforce this against the people who are suffering through these conditions and against and, and, and come and, and, and like harass the protesters who come here to support the tenants. So it's clear that the city, the courts, and this is all set up you know, in the interest of, of, of protecting the property of, of the rich slumlord against and working against tenants who are only trying to exercise their rights to fight back and not, you know, live under these deplorable conditions. So now, we've seen the tape where first you're giving your testimony to the police, and the next thing we know, they're bringing you out of the building. Mm -hmm. You've been at, in front of the building. Now we see you coming out of the building in handcuffs. What happened inside the building during that time that we that we all see on tape? They took me into the basement, and they yelled at me and threatened me and told me all kinds of things. Who the fuck do you think you are? What are you doing in, you know, like, what are you doing here? We're tired of your protesters, you need to leave. You're already getting what you want. They're coming to fix the electricity, you know? And I was like, you're more, you're interested in me, right? Because they, they know who I am personally. I've been organizing Cop Watch in Sunset Park for like the last 12 years. So these cops personally know who I am. I've documented them you know, doing all kinds of abuse throughout the years, and they know me, and their focus was on arresting me. It's like, oh, now we got him, finally. And here's this older woman who just got assaulted, who's being taken out of there in a stretcher, and they could care less about her. When I told them, why don't you, why don't you not focusing on what happened to her? 
How come the super is not being arrested for assaulting her? And why is the focus on me? And they're like, we don't care about this bitch. Just like that. They said, we don't care about this bitch. She didn't get hit. Nobody assaulted her. Nothing happened. And it was just clearly they could care less. They just wanted to blame me for something, pin something on me. So while Did I was- these cops not just see her come out on a stretcher? No, they saw it. They just chose to ignore it, you know? And it, it was just like a half an hour of just me being threatened, being provoked. And I had to just, basically I saw that I was, you know, overpowered there was too many of them there's nothing i was gonna do i'm away from the public side so my position was just to stay like a monk and just like not respond not react they were looking for reasons trying to like provoke me into like getting into a situation with them and it was clearly to assault me and attack me while i was away from the public and because i didn't feed into that and i didn't, I didn't even bother talking to them after a while you know they didn't get the reaction that they wanted so as they were going to try to take me out of the building protesters saw what was going on and started yelling and chanting and that's when the, the, the cops were afraid to take me out of the building by myself and they then decided to arrest the super so they, they so you know so not to create a scene and, and, and act as if this they're being fair somehow you know so since then they have not you know they pressed charges on myself for assaulting the super they they arrested the super without my consent they're saying, like, you know, they're pressing charges on my behalf to the super, which I'm here to say that I'm not pressing charges on the super. I'm not here. I don't call the police. I don't I don't work with police. I don't cooperate or participate. You know what I'm saying? Remember, I call the police. The cops come and arrest us and, and you know, try to find a way to blame us somehow. So um, clearly working with the police does not work or benefit us. Um, so I'm here to denounce that today. And also, you know, it's, it's it's hypocritical that you know they they arrest me and they the, the charges that they put on the super it wasn't for assaulting Francisca who clearly was put in the hospital with cerebral bleeding and she uh, she clearly did not get the type of protection that she deserves from the police department which we expect there was no order of protection they didn't press the right charges on this guy he's walking around continuing to harass the tenants and you know what I'm saying police ain't doing their job nor is the district attorney's office. Have any of the Red Strikers pressed charges against the super? Yes, Francisca has pressed charges. She has met with the district attorney's office twice. She has a lawyer. They brought medical records to the hot to the district attorney and still no action is done. The last time we did this with the tenants, the judge was like, all right, all of you are here for this case. This case is gonna go first. And also she really told the, the, the owner who was at the, at the last court, Hearing. The foreclosure hearing. Yeah, the foreclosure hearing. She told him, like, do you see how many people are here? Like, she, like, berated him, you know? And uh, it was really interesting because a lot of the other people that were there were also for different, like, all like other uh, landlords. And we were like, this is what happens when you don't take care of your building. You know, this is what happens when you mistreat the, com the confidence, in that, you know? Both Flores and Espinosa were charged with assault at the turbulent hearing at which some supporters were ejected from the courtroom. Espinoza was served with an order of protection and can no longer live at the house. Tenants were jubilant, saying that this means an end to Espinoza's harassment of them. Rent strikers also packed the court on August 3rd at a hearing concerning the foreclosure of the building. We spoke with them outside the Kings County Civil Court. And we're hoping that uh, we will get a receiver and we no longer have to deal with Orazio Petito. That is what we are hoping for. That's what we are here. We also want the judge to see that we don't want just any other landlord to come in here with the intentions of pushing people out. So we're trying to voice as long as we, as hard as we can to let them know that we want real change, real change. We are, we are here so they can see that these are real people that live at, it's not just addresses and parcels and blocks of land. These are real families that live here and we want them to know and that uh, we are there and we are going to stay there. Yeah. Landlord Orazio Petito made an appearance with an attorney who announced that he would no longer be representing Petito. The proposed new receivers of the building had not completed necessary paperwork and the transfer was delayed.